At least 11 employees were taken to hospitals after an explosion at a Louisville, Kentucky, business that produces natural color for foods and drinks. The explosion on Tuesday happened at Givaudan Sense Color. News video footage showed an industrial building with the middle section burned and partially collapsed. The cause of the explosion remains unknown. Louisville Metro Emergency Services had urged people within a mile of the business to shelter in place, but that order was lifted about two hours after the explosion. The University of Louisville Hospital treated seven of the people injured and two of them are in critical condition. Five people were found shot to death inside three homes in the same area of Wichita, Kansas and police believe the shootings are connected and that the victims all knew each other. Police were called to a report of a shooting Sunday evening and found a man dead inside a home. Officers following up on his death went to a home a few blocks away and found three other people dead. Officers canvassing that neighborhood looked into the window of a third home and saw a fifth victim. Wichita police chief said one of the people found dead Sunday was the suspected shooter, and added that they believe the investigation will determine that one of those victims was the shooter of all the other victims. This is a tragic incident. Uh, this is a senseless act that you know uh, that you know some families right now are are you know dealing with. And you know again, we we want to show some respect to them uh, because we are still investigating. Unfortunately, I have five victims who are deceased from gunshots and we believe that the investigation will determine that one of those victims was the shooter of all the other victims but it's just too early on in the investigation for us to make a statement as to who we believe that is but we have, we have strong direction mexico is facing a second donald trump presidency and few countries can match its experience as a target of trump's rhetoric there have been threats to close the border, impose tariffs and even send U.S. forces to fight Mexican drug cartels if the country doesn't do more to stem the flow of migrants and drugs. That's not to mention what mass deportations of migrants who are in the U.S. illegally could do to remittances, the money sent home by migrants, that have become one of Mexico's main sources of income. But as much as this second round looks like the first round, when Mexico pacified Trump by quietly ceding to his immigration demands, circumstances have changed, and not necessarily for the better. Today, Mexico has in Claudia Scheinbaum a somewhat stern leftist ideologue as president, and Trump is not known for handling such relations well. Back in 2019, Mexico's then-president Andres Manuel López Obrador was a charismatic, plain-spoken, folksy leader who seemed to understand Trump, because both had a transactional view of politics, you give me what I want, I'll give you what you want. The two went on to form a chummy relationship. 
But while López Obrador was forged in the give-and-take politics of the often corrupt former ruling party, the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, Scheinbaum grew up in a family of leftist activists and got her political experience in radical university student movements. Scheinbaum made a point of being one of the first world leaders to call Trump on Thursday to congratulate him after the election, but during the call Trump did two things that may say a lot about how things will go. First, Scheinbaum said, Trump quickly brought up the border to remind her there were issues there. Then he asked Scheinbaum to send his greetings to López Obrador, with whom Trump said he had a very good relationship. That might suggest that Trump believes that López Obrador, the new president's political mentor, is still in charge, a view shared by some analysts. Not everything has changed for the worse, cross-border trade has topped $800 billion per year and U.S. companies are more dependent than ever on Mexican plants. But the U.S. Mexico-Canada Trade Agreement, or USMCA, is coming up for review, and Mexico has made legal changes that Trump could seize on to demand a renegotiation of parts of the deal. Scheinbaum has suggested Mexico won't give in even if backed into a corner. But standing up hasn't worked particularly well before. You see it, the criminal invasion horrible some horrible deathly people mexico has been the victim of donald trump's harshest criticism since his first term in office when he accused mexicans of bringing drugs and crime across the border this time around in trump's second term china is likely to take some of the heat but the focus remains firmly on mexico because of two key issues stemming the flow of migrants across the border and bringing jobs back to the united states In Trump's first term, Mexico had a charismatic folksy president who was knew the art of the deal. He was able to negotiate an agreement where Mexico would agree to accept migrants deported back across the border even if they weren't Mexicans. And the United States turned a blind eye towards Mexico's faulty compliance in the war on drugs. <laughs> Things have changed this time around. Mexico is now the United States' largest trading partner with $800 billion in cross-border trade every year. Mexican officials hope that economic interdependence will be enough to stem, stave off the threats of border closures or tariffs. But this time around, Mexico's new president definitely doesn't know the art of the deal. She's a leftist ideologue, and it's not clear how Trump will respond to that.